Q4 e-tron is an important model for Audi, so important that Ingolstadt feels the need to create two distinct variants, this Q4 Sportback e-tron derivative being the more dynamic looking one. Like its standard counterpart, it's built on the Volkswagen Group MEB chassis for volume all-electric cars, but pushes the boundaries of that platform in terms of the premium prices being charged here for the size of car delivered. Still, you certainly get a very upmarket feel that'll help ease you into your new electrified phase of motoring ownership. Audi's all-electric e-tron range continues to widen as more is revealed of the company's capabilities when it comes to EV technology. The e-tron sub-brand once designated PHEVs, then it was set aside for all electric models, the first three of those being the e-tron large SUV, the e-tron Sportback large five-door GT and the e-tron GT Quattro Sport Saloon. But these were merely preludes to the BEV models that really matters to Ingolstadt. This Q4 e-tron offered with a choice of body shapes. This Q4 Sportback e-tron obviously being the sportier one. Where the standard Q4 e-tron takes on the plushest versions of boxy compact EV crossovers like the Volkswagen ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq IV, the Q4 Sportback e-tron takes aim more directly at sportier contenders in this class like the Cupra Born. Actually, all the engineering bits that matter are common between these four cars, namely the MEB platform and the battery tech. Yet Audi claims to have put its own stamp on the way this car drives and feels. Let's see. With its Q3 and Q5 Sportback models, Audi slightly differentiates the suspension feel with base variants, but there's none of that here. So the Q4 Sportback e-tron drives in the same way as the conventional Q4 model. You select drive using a slider type shifter situated on the center console. And once underway, there's the kind of instant throttle response you'd usually get from an EV of this sort. In terms of powertrains, there's nothing we haven't seen before in Volkswagen Group EVs. Most of these tend to be chosen with the 52 kilowatt hour battery that's used by the base Q4 35 e-tron, which uses a 170 PS rear driven electric motor, makes 62 miles an hour in nine seconds and has a range of 215 miles. Next up is the Q440 e-tron variant we're trying here, which has a bigger 76.6 kilowatt hour net capacity battery and a more powerful 204 PS rear driven motor, making 62 miles an hour in 8.5 seconds and offering a 323 mile driving range. The flagship Q450 e-tron Quattro variant also uses the 76.6 kilowatt hour battery, but has both front and rear mounted electric motors developing a combined 299 PS, which means 62 miles an hour in just 6.2 seconds and a range of 302 miles. Plus, with this top performance variant, the top speed is lifted from the usual Q4 maximum of 99 miles an hour to 111. Across the range, there's the same kind of suspension setup you'd find in other mid-sized Audi SUVs, a McPherson strut front and five-link rear arrangement with sports suspension available, which lowers ride height by 15 millimeters and adaptive damping offered further up the range. In practice, like this model's Volkswagen Group EV cloned cousins, every Q4 e-tron is basically rear driven. Even the 50 e-tron Quattro version only brings its front wheels into play when it absolutely has to. And when you drive a Q4 Sportback in town, you quickly realize quite a few of the reasons why. There are real advantages in placing the powertrain of a car like this, the electric motor and its associated single speed auto gearbox on the back axle, primarily because the front wheels are then freed up for steering duties. 
The turning circle is a London taxi light, 10.2 metres, better than a tiny Volkswagen Up city car. And as a result, this SUV is superbly manoeuvrable for its size, jinking through traffic holdups and darting into spaces. As with other electric vehicles, this one's town travel is characterised by its need to constantly emit a strange E sound intended to warn pedestrians of this Q4's impending approach. You wonder, though, why it's necessary for this feature to sound so otherworldly. Other brands use film composers to create more pleasant melodies. The rear-driven format also benefits this Audi beyond the city limits, allowing a near 50-50 virtually perfect weight distribution, which, together with the low centre of gravity provided by the central battery pack placement, helps disguise its rather portly curb weight of just over two tonnes. That's almost 300 kilos heavier than a conventional Q5 Sportback. Despite, or perhaps because of that, traction through the turns is excellent, but as with every EV, you're always subconsciously aware of just how much bulk is impeding your forward motion. We'd hope that Audi might have been able to engineer in a bit more ride and handling polish to the usual Volkswagen Group mid-sized EV formula here, but as it turns out, the drive experience is much as it is with a comparable Volkswagen ID4, which means it's relatively firm. So there you have it, a sportier take on the future of conventional motoring, according to Ingolstadt, and one of the first volume-selling predominantly rear-driven cars the brand has brought us since the 1930s. You might have hoped for something a fraction more, Vorsprung der Technik, but you're certainly served up a confection here that's distinctively Audi. The Q4 Sportback e-tron is definitely a sleeker thing than its standard shape counterpart, and not just visually. The drag coefficient drops from 0.28 to 0.26 CD. This sportier variant's more sharply swept back silhouette culminates in a spoiler that sits much lower on the split and steeply raked rear window. And as the area in which the air swirls as it comes off the vehicle is restricted to the zone beneath the spoiler, that area is significantly smaller than in the ordinary Q4 e-tron. This not only highlights the more unique design of this SUV coupe, but also enhances its range by around seven miles, while also reducing the lift on the rear. The front end is, of course, just as with the ordinary Q4 e-tron, dominated by this rather in-your-face, multifaceted e-tron branded version of the brand's usual single-frame front grille, which isn't a grille, of course, this being an EV, but has been retained by designer Mark Lichter to keep the sense of brand continuity that many rival models in this segment have lost. Outer black framing flows into these LED headlights, which can be of the intelligence matrix sort, each one with 16 individually activated LEDs, which give you more precisely targeted illumination and the option of selecting between four variable digital light signatures. Anyway, enough for the outside. Let's take a look in the cabin. Well... It's certainly nothing like anything you'll have seen from any previous Audi. Everything on the upper level is angular, with none of the elements appearing to blend very harmoniously with each other. But it all kind of works in a contemporary minimalistic sort of way. There's an unusual jutting lower console, trimmed in smudge-worthy piano black for the neat little gear selector slider, and just above, the silver-trimmed central fascia section incorporates horizontal vents and the 11.6-inch MMI Navigation Plus central display, with a sweep across the cabin that gets interrupted by this beady-browed instrument binnacle. If you've a Q4 with brake recuperation paddles, that binnacle's 10.25-inch virtual cockpit screen has to be viewed through this rather weird quartic steering wheel with flattened top and bottom sections. Futuristic? You'd say so. Premium? Possibly. But only really if you spend some cash on a more upmarket level of trim like the one we have here. 
Right, time to take a look in the rear. Now you've got to duck slightly as you get in, but it's nothing too serious. To accommodate the battery, the back seat is mounted 70 millimetres higher than the front, which you might expect to create a headspace issue given this sportback variant swept back roof line. Actually, though, while those of basketball playing stature might struggle, most other adults should be fine back here unless they enter wearing particularly elaborate headgear. It's also a wider cabin than you'd expect a relatively compact mid-sized SUV to be able to provide and with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things three adults could actually fit reasonably easily into the back of this car. All models get three zone automatic air conditioning which means you get these separate climate controls back here along with a 12 volt socket and a couple of USB-C ports. Boot space in this Sportback actually rises slightly over the ordinary model, 535 litres rather than 520. But capacity, when the 40-20-40 split seat back is lowered, falls slightly, 1,460 litres rather than 1,490. There's a £1,500 premium to pay for Q4 Sportback e-tron ownership over the price of an ordinary Q4 e-tron, which at the time of this test in spring 2022 was priced from just over £42,500 as a starting point. So you'll need to find from around £44,000 more for this sleeker body style. There are lots of model options if you want to pay more, with variants ranging right the way up to just under the £70,000 price point. Yes, really. There are three main trim levels, Sport, S-Line and Vorsprung. And the range kicks off with the 52 kilowatt hour 35 e-tron variant. You'll need well over £48,000 for this 40 e-tron derivative with a larger 76.6 kilowatt hour net capacity battery and from around £55,000 upwards for the top 50 e-tron Quattro four-wheel drive model. Base Sport variants get 19-inch graphite grey alloy wheels. Those rims upgraded to 20 inches in size with the mid-level S-Line trim level most customers will choose. Manhattan grey contrast-coloured bumpers are a feature of the top-tier Vorsprung models with their even more striking 21-inch wheels. These gain niceties like a panoramic glass sunroof, an augmented reality heads-up display and a Sonos premium sound system. This kind of sophisticated equipment is optionally available lower down the range, alongside much else. Take, for instance, the intelligent Matrix LED headlights, each one with 16 individually activated LEDs, which give you more precisely targeted illumination and provide the option of selecting between four variable digital light signatures. We'd also want to look at the optional heat pump, which rapidly heats and cools the interior using the thermal losses from the electric components and the temperature of the outside air. It uses eco-friendly CO2 as a refrigerant which flows through the circuit at high pressure. The heat pump can reduce losses in range caused by usage of the climate control system, especially in winter. Its strengths come to the fore on long drives. Safety kit across the Q4 Sportback e-tron range includes pre-sense front with pedestrian and cyclist detection, along with a lane departure warning lane keeping system and swerve assist to help with high speed avoidance manoeuvres. Plus camera based traffic sign recognition and a turn assist feature that stops you from turning into a junction into the path of another car. Top Vorsprung spec also gets more, a side assist blind spot monitor, exit warning which alerts occupants just about to open a door in the face of oncoming traffic and emergency assist which can take over driving duties completely should you become incapacitated. Plus there's cross traffic assist rear which warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing and Audi's pre-sense basic and pre-sense rear systems which prepare the car for rear-end collisions.
We covered driving range in our driving experience section and in our design section, referenced the extra seven miles of range made possible because of this sportback body style sleeker aerodynamics. And what about charging? Well, using a conventional garage seven kilowatt wall box, you can recharge the base 52 kilowatt hour Q4 35 e-tron model with 175 miles of charge in eight and a half hours. Maximum charging capacity is 7.4 kilowatts on an AC system or 100 kilowatts using DC current. What about with the larger 76.6 kilowatt hour net capacity battery of the Q440 e-tron and Q450 e-tron Quattro? Well, those variants have been engineered for charging speeds of up to 11 kilowatts during AC charging and 135 kilowatts for DC charging. With such a rapid public charger, WLTP testing has confirmed that in only 10 minutes, a Q440 e-tron model like this one will be able to recharge enough electricity to cover a distance of about 80 miles. Charging at 135 kilowatts in ideal conditions, the battery can achieve an 80% state of charge from a 5% starting point in 29 minutes. If you're using a conventional 7 kilowatt garage wall box, a Q440 e-tron can charge 255 miles of range in eight and a quarter hours. Using the My Audi app, owners can activate charging remotely using a smartphone. The app also provides access to the Comfort Remote Preconditioning System, which enables remote adjustment of the cabin temperature and seat heating functions to ensure that the cabin climate is always comfortable well before a journey begins. Accessing and paying for electricity while on the road can be easily taken care of using the e-tron charging service which provides UK subscribers with one RFID payment card that is accepted at a vast number of charge points operated by 18 suppliers across the UK and Europe and offers a choice of two fixed price charging tariffs. Within the Q3 and Q5 ranges, the sportback body shape tends to outsell the conventional SUV version, and we expect the same trend to be replicated here. After all, the Q4 Sportback e-tron doesn't cost vastly more than its boxier showroom stablemate, yet makes a significantly more dynamic driveway statement. There's no real penalty for the more slippery shape in terms of either boot space or rear cabin headroom either. In this form, the Q4 is more likely to appeal to premium EV customers who might be looking at more stylized rivals like the Polestar 2, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Arguably, this Audi can shade all of these competitors when it comes to cabin ambience. It has the finish, the luxury and to some extent the driving dynamics of an electric crossover from the next class up. The kind of thing you'd get from larger EV models like the Jaguar I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC. But of course, you pay for that, and with Audi, it was ever thus.